Until recently, the United States was doing a pretty good job regulating its air pollution. Since the Clean Air Act passed in 1963, laws have tackled the emissions from cars, corporations, and chemical plants. A 2018 study found that emissions from US manufacturing had fallen by 60% between 1990 and 2008. But in 2017, for the first time in decades, US air quality got worse. There are many reasons to be concerned about this, and one of the most important ones has to do with people's health. In an EconoFact memo, Cornell's Nick Sanders presents research that shows how pollution levels impact health, and through this, people's ability to think clearly, work effectively, and make a living. So, let's start with the effects of pollution on health. Now, most people would assume that breathing bad air wouldn't be great for their well-being, or at least I would hope so. But actually proving the benefits of cleaner air is difficult. It's hard to separate the effects of pollution from the effects of other health risks that often accompany dirty air. It's hard to establish whether differences in health outcomes arise from differences in pollution levels, rather than differences in diet or wealth, or maybe even just bad luck. But researchers have found ways around these difficulties, and Sanders has reviewed three examples that pretty conclusively show that pollution affects health. The first example looks at what happens to health when factories shut down or reopen. For example, in 1986, a labour strike shut down the local steel plant in Utah Valley, Utah. When the work stopped, pollution levels dropped, and so did hospital admissions for respiratory diseases like asthma and bronchitis. Of course, breathing problems can arise from many sources, but interestingly, the area had an extremely low percentage of smokers, and many of those affected were kids. What really illustrates the role of pollution from the factory was that when the plant reopened, hospital admissions rose once more. Another way to study the effects of pollution on health is to look at changes in traffic. Lines of cars at toll stations spew exhaust in the air. But newer, easy pass and fast lane toll devices allow cars to keep going, so there are not these areas of concentrated pollution. In New Jersey and Pennsylvania, the introduction of electronic toll devices led to improvements in a variety of outcomes for newborn babies living near the toll booths, such as fewer premature births and higher infant birth weight. A third research method is to look at differences in air quality between two places. For example, your health could be affected by wind patterns or which side of town you live in. One California study showed that those 75 and older living downwind of a major freeway had higher mortality rates than those upwind of the same freeway. These are just a few examples of how pollution affects our bodies. But what about our minds? Well, there's also evidence that suggests that pollution affects our long-term cognitive performance, that is, our ability to think and reason well. And often, if people can't think as well, they won't earn as much. In 1970, clean air legislation led to improvements in air quality in many of the US counties that had the dirtiest air. In those counties, children born in the years immediately after the cleanup did better than those born in the same counties in the years immediately before. 30 years on, more of them had jobs and their average earnings were higher. This is true even when we take into account other things that might affect wages, like sex, race and socio-economic background. An Israeli study has also shown that kids exposed to higher levels of pollution on days they were taking high school final exams got lower scores. This impacted college entrance and resulted in lower wages later in life. Not only does pollution clog your brain, it also lightens your wallet. The OECD have predicted how global healthcare spending will be affected if pollution levels continue to rise at their current rate. In 2015, the cost of healthcare arising from pollution was almost $500 per person. They estimated that by 2060, this could rise to as much as $2,800 per person. The effects on national spending would be significant. Let's take China. If they met the current World Health Organization air quality suggestions, their annual healthcare spending would be reduced by $42 billion. And these estimates are borne out by experience. 
A study in the American Economic Review showed that when polluting emissions were limited in Midwestern and Eastern states between 2003 and 2008, money spent on medicine and drugs decreased by $800 million a year. As this has shown, breathing dirty air can increase medical spending, shorten lives, harm learning, and even hinder our ability to make everyday decisions. Of course, regulating emissions does impose costs, but understanding the wider consequences of pollution is essential if we want a green and prosperous future.